my three favorites of 2022, three more to go, and three I won't likely get to. Hi, I'm Michael Leverts, and this is Fit to be Red. Today I'll be talking about 10 books among the 2022 new releases that I've read this year. Three of them stand above the rest. There are at least three more 2022 releases that I expect to get to before the year ends. And then there's three that I'm pretty sure I won't get to. Now to come up with 10, I'm going to include Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel as an honorable mention. I really enjoyed this read and where it stands out is that it had a unique combination of a calm reading experience along with a well-paced sense of mystery. It didn't blow my mind, but it does feel like that warm, comfortable read that you can take on vacation, maybe to the mountains during the fall go in a log cabin, you sit next to the fireplace, you've got some blankets, and you just chill with a book. The story follows a few characters, including a popular author leaving her moon colony home to go on a book tour on Earth during a pandemic. There's future time patrol characters investigating time travel or timeline anomalies, a young Englishman temporarily banished from his aristocratic family in England, and he's sent to British Columbia in Canada. I have a full review of this book coming up on my channel soon, so you can take a look out for that. And I also talked about this on one of my Time Travel Week episodes, and you can find that on my video page. My third favorite 2022 release was Tochi Onyabuchi's Goliath. This was a 300-page book that felt like, in a fulfilling and satisfying way, a 600-page read. Onya Butchie's attention to detail and world-building completely immersed me in a vivid, near-future dystopian Earth. This was a meaningful read, and its power, for me, was how much it provoked me to consider imbalances and inequity in our current world. The story follows several characters from a gay couple returning to the Earth from a moon colony to the young people of color who remained on Earth through the worst of its toxic environment, surviving, living, hoping, rebuilding, and witnessing the return of those who are all too ready to gentrify. My second favorite new 2022 release is Linda Nagata's Needles. Needles is book three of Nagata's phenomenal Inverted Frontiers series. The series begins with book one, Edges, an action-packed space opera. Humanity has expanded far into the stars. In deep space, humanity is faced down by a robotic alien AI spaceship hell-bent on their destruction. Book three, Needles, recently released, was just amazing and probably the best of the series. All through the series, I felt Asimov vibes, and especially so in this third entry, especially with its examinations of humanity alongside technology. Needles plays with consciousness and what it means to be human in very profound and provocative ways. And no surprise to me, my favorite read of 2022 so far is Adrian Tchaikovsky's Eyes of the Void. This is book two of the Final Architect series. Like the first book, Shards of Earth, the story focuses on central characters Chris, Solus, and Idris, and the rest of the crew of the salvage ship, the Vulture God, among the universe of humans, Partheni. The Partheni are an enhanced race of superpowered women grown parthenogenically in vats. The uh, almost mystical advanced tech alien race, the Divine Essiel, and other alien races. Central to the theme in book one was the question, who are these moon-sized aggressor destroyers of inhabited worlds known as the Architects, and what do they want? Book two, Eyes of the Void, turns up the dial on the action and shifts gears to, where did the Architects come from, and how do we stop them? Like Nagata's Needles, this book was very difficult to put down, and you can expect to see this ranked well on my nearly four-hour-long Top 210 Science Fiction Books episode, airing later this month. As it is only September, the year isn't over yet, and there are a few new releases that I still expect to get to. These are Sequoia Nagamatsu's How High We Go in the Dark, John Scalzi's The Kaiju Preservation Society, and then Africa Risen, which is an anthology. How High We Go in the Dark was a gift. I received this early in the year. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I do expect to read it soon. The setting is near future 2030, and an archaeologist discovers and unearths a dead body from the Arctic permafrost. This leads to an outbreak of a deadly virus and a worldwide plague. I'm curious to see how the search for a cure plays out, and I'm hoping for well-drawn characters and a presentation of how the world is affected by the plague. I can imagine parallels to Robert Charles Wilson's Spin in this regard. Spin is another novel that I recently reviewed on my channel, 
and you can check that out. I think it's already up. If it's not, it will be up soon. Also, because I'm reading Adam Roberts's Beta currently, and I'm enjoying the presentation of animals with artificially enhanced intelligence, I'm curious to see what's up with a talking pig that I heard about that is supposedly in this book. Scalzi's Kaiju Preservation Society sounds like a good bet for me also. I always have a good time with Scalzi. His quirkiness, his snark, and his general style of humor always resonates with me. This novel apparently features endangered dinosaurs on an alien world, and knowing just those three things, Scalzi, space, and sci-fi dinosaur situations, gives me enough enticement to get this one read. I'm not a huge dinosaur guy, but ever since Bradbury's The Sound of Thunder, decades and decades ago, I have a warm place in my heart for sci-fi dinosaur combinations. Africa Risen, A New Era of Science Fiction is probably the book that I've been eager for the most all year long. This is an anthology of several shorts all written by African science fiction and fantasy authors. The anthology is edited by Cherie Renee Thomas, Ogan Achove, Donald Ekpeki, and Zelda Knight. The focus of all of the stories will be on Africa and the African diaspora and is presented as a statement, as its title suggests, that African science fiction fantasy is not on the rise. It's already risen. Finally, how about three 2022 new releases that I don't think that I'm going to get around to this year? These are Alistair Reynolds' Aversion, Blake Crouch's Upgrade, and Tamsman Muir's Nona the Ninth. First up is Aversion. I'm excited for this read, but I think that I missed my window on reading it for this year. I lent this to a friend to take on vacation a couple of weeks ago. He's not a science fiction reader, but he has informed me that he rates it four stars. That sounds pretty good. He called it a good beach read, which doesn't seem to track for what I think of Alistair Reynolds' work, but that, along with his four stars, makes me even more curious for this read. I did read a few pages of this before sharing it with my friend, and I was a bit thrown off that it does appear to start out on a sailing ship in what seems to be a small-scale setting. Maybe not a sailing ship, but a, a ship on the ocean. That's fine, but again, it's just not what I'm expecting from Alistair Reynolds, so let's see. I've enjoyed Blake Crouch's Dark Matter and Recursion, and I expect that I'm also going to enjoy Upgrade. Crouch's work always seems to be fast reads with rapid page turning. I'm sure that I'm going to like it when I eventually get to it. Crouch often leans more away from deep philosophical science fiction and more into suspense and thriller, making his books more of a mood read for me. I'm not in need of a palate cleanser at the moment, so I'm going to give this one a pass for this year. Might get to it next year. The premise in Upgrade is that a character is gene hacked. This means he's biologically in enhanced at a genetic level. This guy is an agent, and I'm pretty sure that the focus is going to be on him investigating those who are doing the genetic experiments. And finally, Nona the Ninth. I'm just not going to read this one. I read Gideon the Ninth this year, and while I enjoyed the reading experience, it was so far from a match to what I was expecting and looking for that I nearly DNF'd it several times. It's a me thing, and I can say that I have no interest in continuing this series, while at the same time acknowledging that Muir is an interesting writer with a very unique style. Muir is pretty fearless when it comes to trying novel approaches to storytelling, enough so to keep me reading Gideon to the finish, despite my lack of interest in the plot and the characters. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Leverts, and this is Fit to be Read.